All right, in this um, video, I want to be a little bit less <clears throat> um, kind of mathematically rigorous and, and try to gain some more intuition about um, looking at actual code. And, um, and so I'm going to be making some plots and also trying to count some steps uh, programmatically. And so I have all this helper code here, which don't worry about too much. Um, that's just going to help me make nice plots like down here, like I've also been putting in some of the slides. And um, so the core of what I want to do here is figure out what the complexity is for two functions. Um, and those two functions are is prime and find prime. And so I'm just trying to call this with a couple um, in a couple of cases to get an intuition for what they do. I'm going to call is prime of um, 11. It says true. Is prime of 12. False. Um, is prime of 13. True again. And so it's just telling me if it's a prime. And uh, let me run the other one now. So I'm going to say find primes. Um, what this one's doing is it's really looping over all the numbers and um, and kind of figuring out which ones are, are primes. And I can actually see I have a small bug here. It's including uh, 0 and 1. And so maybe what I should do is just change this. I should start looking at it at 2. Okay, so I have both of these functions, and I want to figure out what the complexity is for both of them. And in this case, I see that find primes as a loop, and inside of that loop I'm calling is prime. And so it's trying to help me to figure out what the complexity of is prime is first before coming back to do this one. Okay, and so so just kind of looking at it, let, let's let's reason through this. Um, what is the input size first? Right, that's something interesting. So what is the input size? Um, the input size. I don't have any list here, uh, but I see that I'm having to do more work as I'm checking a bigger number, right? Because I'm really looping over all the numbers from two until the one I'm trying to check. And I'm trying to see, well, is any of these numbers, does it divide evenly into n or not? Right, so so my input size is, well, uh, the the number we want to check, right? So so when I'm talking about input size, it's not always, it's not always like the size of a list or something like that. It could just be, well, this number that I'm trying to um, learn something about, which may be a little bit counterintuitive. Okay, so just kind of looking at this, um, you know, I see that this is a step, and that's trying to run once. Uh, this is a step, and that's trying to run once. Um, this is a step, and that's trying to run. Well, if it if it was range of n, it would be, uh, it would run n times. But since I'm starting at at two, I guess this will run like n minus two times, and. When we're dealing with complexity, I don't really care about these constant factors, right? They kind of wash out in terms of, of the bigger factors. And so when I'm looking at this, this looks to me like it's going to be order n, right? As n gets bigger, well, I have to run through the loop more times. And, and, and everything inside of the loop is just this constant, uh, you know, constant complexity single step. And um, so that's what I think the answer is. Let, let's just try to add some code in here to um, kind of gain some intuition and, and see if this seems right. So, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to create this steps variable. And, um, and I'm going to make that be a global. So I'm going to say global steps. And, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually just trying to count here. right? So I'm going to say, oh, here I did a step. Uh, maybe inside of this loop I'm doing a step. But, I mean, there's different ways I could count this. Maybe here I'll say I'm doing a step, and, and maybe here I'm doing a step. And, um, and you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to try calling this function for different input sizes and, and then try to see what my, how many steps I have to do as that scales up. And, and so I'll do that like this. I'll just have a loop um, maybe for uh, i in range. I'll go from 2 until n, right? So exclusive, so 1 past that. Maybe maybe I should just make this my n variable. Um, I'm going to call is prime, and uh, it, it returns something which I don't even really care about. All I'm trying to do here is measure the performance rather than get an answer. I'm going to do that, and um, and then what I want to do each time is I have each of these n values. Is I want to figure out how many steps I have, and so when I call this thing, right, it's counting all the steps, steps inside, right. So I'm going to get some number of steps back. And, and so what I'm going to do after each iteration is I'm going to set that back to zero. So at this point, I can uh, type out uh, n 
my input size, and, and then also how many steps I did. And I run that, and I can see how, how this scales off, right? Two size of input of two gives me two steps, three gives me three steps, um, so on and, and so forth, right? So I can actually see there's a very close relationship um, between these. And so, so let's do this. Let's try to um, actually plot these things. And, um, and to plot it, right, let's say I want a line plot, uh, what would be a nice thing to do is to have a pandas series and have these numbers be the index of the series, right, because the index goes to the x-axis, and have these numbers be the values, right, because the values go to the y-axis. And, and so I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a pandas series. I'm going to say pd. Dot, uh, series, and uh, maybe I'll just call it s. And, um, and each time through this, instead of just printing off that, hey, this goes to that, I'm just going to say s of n equals steps. Okay, so let's, let's try running that. And, um, and it's complaining that when I create an empty series, I should tell it what the type will be. All right, so, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to say uh, dtype equals, I guess, int. Right, so I do that. And, and then the other thing that it's complaining about here is which is a kind of strange is saying well what about what index am i at, at? and and that's out of bounds and, and that's because it's trying to use this n as an integer position and i would prefer that it use it as uh well the actual index right so i'm just going to say dot location i do that and then i have this nice series down here and so i can actually try plotting this thing all right so down here um, like I was saying, I just have these helper functions that um, allow me to plot these nice lines. And so, so I'm just trying to do this. I'm going to say s.plot.line. And where do I want to plot it? I want to plot it inside of that AX region. And then what else do I want to do? I want to, um, I'll just make the line black. So I'll say color equals black. And then, you know, if I abbreviated it, B, that would be blue. K is an abbreviation for black, so I can do that. And, um, and, and then what I'm going to do, just to try to flesh this out, is I'm going to draw a bounding line on it. And let me just play around with this. Right, so that's not quite large enough. Let, let me try something like um, 1.2 times that, or let me try a little bit larger. Right, I'm not really proving that this is always an upper bounding line, but I'm just trying to get it an intuition, right? If I can show there's some sort of upper bounding line um, then I'm good. And this factor, 1.5, I mean, it's going to have to be bigger if I'm counting more steps, right? I mean, I guess I counted this as one step. Um, I, I could have been counting here. Uh, maybe this is two steps here, right? But I can see that that does seem to be constant, constant or, or not constant time. It seems to be linear time, right? It's proportional to n. As the data size gets larger, the number of steps goes up roughly proportionally. So that's a linear time, uh, uh, big O of n. Okay, what about what about if I wanted to do that with um, find primes? So I'm trying to look at what's happening here, and and I see. Well, let's just try to look through here. So this is a, a kind of a constant time. This is a constant time. the The tricky part is is the loop, right? Um, I'm looping roughly proportional to the cap. Okay. And so if I'm trying to find all the numbers between 0 and 100, I, I'm kind of looping through here about 100 times. And, um, and this one's a little bit trickier, right? If this body here was constant time, then I would be saying that this is order, order n. But, but it's not, because, because this is prime thing gets more expensive as we go, right? And, and so, well, how, how expensive is, is this whole thing? Well, this runs, this runs about n times. And, and of course now my, my input size is my cap. And then how many times is this, what is the complexity of this? Like how many steps does this have to do? Um, you know, the first time through it does about one step. I'm just trying to think about how many times this loop runs up here. It's trying to be roughly something like this. It's trying to be like one time. The next time I go through, I might need to loop two times. I might need to loop three times, and then all, all the way up. Eventually, I'm going to loop about n times. 
And uh, and so this is a little bit trickier, right? I mean, it's kind of like I'm you know adding these numbers, right? Every time I go through this loop, it gets a little bit more expensive. First, it costs about one step, and then about two, about three. And, and so well, what, what happens when I average all of these numbers together? That's going to be very roughly equal to n over 2. Very roughly, right? Um, why is that? Well, I'm trying to take the average of these numbers, which is n, uh, uh, which is like n plus 1 over 2, right? And, and then ultimately when I want to look at the whole class, I'm kind of adding them. I'm, I'm looping n times. So, so really kind of the cost of this whole thing is n squared over 2. And since we're ignoring constant factors, I could just say this is an order of n squared. Is what my, in, oh, sorry, order of n squared. That's my intuition, right, is what the complexity will be here. Um, let, let's see if, that, if that's right. Um, well, not, I'm not really having any proof here, but we're just kind of working informally, right? If I'm trying to count my steps, what will that look like? So I'm just going to do this down here, global steps. And I'm just going to do like this before, just to kind of get a sense of how much work is being done intuitively, right? This is not very mathematical. And uh, and so maybe I'll say, well, here I'm doing a piece. And maybe here I'm doing a piece. Right, maybe here I'm doing a piece. And um, and then down here, right, instead of calling is prime, I'm going to call find primes, which of course calls is prime. And, and so I'm going to be getting both these steps and these, these steps. I'm really counting everything. Right, so I'm going to call find primes. Let's see if this intuition pans out that it's roughly n squared. So um, I'm going to run this, run this. And so that black line is how many steps are actually being performed the way I counted them. And I'm going to try to plot a red line that's on top of that. So let me just try n squared. And I see that intuitively it seems like it's going to be an upper bound. And in, indeed it is, right? I'm not trying to prove that. But it's an upper bound for large n after this crossover point. So, so it turns out indeed oh, this is an order n and this is an order um, n squared.